and welcome to Laura Bits, Bytes, and Business. My name is Katie Coonan, Senior Technical Journalist at Semtech. With me, I have Semtech's own technical fellow, Olivier Seller. Olivier is one of the fathers of Laura and is here today to talk about the advantages of Chirp technology for communicating data over long distances. Olivier, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Before we begin, will you provide a quick overview of what we mean when we talk about Chirp technology and what constitutes long distance in this regard? So it's um, Chirp is a is a is a, is a way to modulate the signal. So it and it's typically spread spectrum, and long range in that context means that we receive a signal below the noise, below the noise floor. And to give an example of distance, if uh, for the same power as a Bluetooth headset, you could reach at the same frequency distances of around 100 kilometers or more using that modulation. Of course, it's a lower data rate. There's no okay. range, but the distance is really huge. Okay, terrific. And what is the most critical step in a radio receiver for long range communications? So since this is about receiving signal below the noise, the most complex task is the initial detection of the signal. It's really a little bit like finding a needle in a haystack. So it's, it's a long and difficult and sometimes too complex process. And Laura is solving this. It makes this process much simpler. Okay, terrific. Can you give us an example? Yes, I'm, I'm going to give you an example of detection in the radio space. So the detection problem is is to answer two questions, when and where. So when is when in time, and where is where in frequency you, 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 you're going to find the signal. So here with the radio, we are finding the frequency by just turning a knob and using our ear to accommodate, well, to, to, to get to the right frequency. Okay, so that doesn't seem so complicated. What's going on here that's different? Yeah, so it's not difficult in the case of the radio because for the time part of it, it's a continuous broadcast. So as long as you hit the right frequency, you're going to hear something. So the time part is, is simple. And also, signal is much stronger than noise. So the detection is, is, is really easy. And that's why the, this audio feedback works in the case of a radio. Okay, so do you have an example of a more complex detection task? Yes. So. Here was a, a more complex example, still with our perception. So that's uh, uh, an example of spread spectrum, which is two dimension, time and space, and which is localized both in time and, and frequency. So of course, this is not a real signal, but a signal looks really like that, like a 2D thing. So it's an, it can be also an image. So instead of a signal, I put a, a visual image with various signal to noise ratio. Uh, so for engineers, the, these numbers talk very well. So below noise, it's when the signal to noise ratio is below zero uh, decibel. So you see that at plus five decibel, mm -hmm. our brain is very good at finding the image. At zero decibel, it's also very good. At minus five, minus five and minus 10, it's, it's surprisingly good at finding, the, the, at finding where the image is below noise, way below noise. Minus 10 means 10% uh, lower, uh, well, sorry, not 10% lower, 10 times lower signal than noise. At minus 15, maybe you can guess it's around here. And at minus 20, well, you can't, you can't yes. tell. That's, that's, that's our limit. So it's very, and, and by the way, uh, Laura operates at minus 22 dB signal to noise ratio with a very simple processing, much simpler than our brain. Oh my. Our brain is, yeah, is a massively parallel processor. And that's, be, that's because of that, that we, we are able to find this. Uh, difficult, well, these this pictures below the noise. So Okay. So if a 2D signal is too noisy, um, what do we do? How, do? how do we get around that? Yeah, so uh, yes. Yeah, so let's go back to the radio. So it's still two dimension, time and frequency. And let's say that the signal we want to detect is that green thing. And the red dotted line is a prototype. and the detection problem really consists in aligning and finding a right correlation by aligning this red signal to the green signal. 
And there are two dimensions to a line, frequency and time. So, so that to end up in this situation where everything is aligned in both dimensions. So instead of doing that with your eye, eyes and brain, like in the previous picture, mm -hmm. you need to try many combinations to, to find the right location. And that's why it's very difficult, for instance, for a GPS receiver to start from no knowledge of the system, from what, what's called a cold start. So it typically takes three minutes to find, to detect the first satellites. And once the first satellite is detected, everything goes pretty fast. But the first detection, the initial detection, is really about searching in many dimensions a very weak signal. And okay. Two dimensions. So what, what LoRa is doing, what CHIRP is doing, is to transform this two-dimensional two dimensional search into a single dimensional search. So, in, so a CHIRP is a linearly increasing frequency versus time, or it could be also be linearly decreasing. But the fact that frequency is actually proportional to time means that there's a single dimension to search. Here, you, can, you just need to search over time and then align to align the green line with the red line. So it's single dimension versus two dimensions. So it's much, much faster. It's actually instant detection uh, using the, the, the very long trick of the uh, fast Fourier transform. With the fast Fourier transform, you instantly synchronize or find the frequency. And that's instant as opposed to many, many tries in parallel or, or, or in a sequel. OK, I, I see on your slide there you talk about the correlation being incomplete. That seems like it would be a problem. Uh, how do you get around that? Or yeah, why so it isn't would, it a problem? Yeah, it would be a problem if we were not doing anything about it. But the thing is, we do apply a second step of the search, a second, but it's only a second step. We first align in time, and then here, we manage, we try to align completely the boundaries, but that's only a second step. So we manage to align the boundaries, but then when we're doing that, we have already detected the signal. So we know there is a signal, so we can invest a little bit of energy and processing time to align it completely. Okay. Um, that's very interesting. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time, uh, and I appreciate getting to learn a little bit more about this. And thanks to all of you watching for spending some time with us. If you want to learn more about Chips from Olivier, head on over to the Laura Developer Portal and read his article in the Technical Journal about the advantages of Chirp technology. Thank you once again, Olivier. It's been wonderful to have you. Thank you, Katie. Bye-bye, everyone.